get to Senator Corker. Lawmakers will be heading back to work on Monday. The health care bill will be front and center. Joining us now from his home state of Tennessee, Senator uh, Bob Corker. Senator, it's good to see you. I don't know if you got a chance to see Henninger's, uh, Dan Henninger's um, op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal today, the GOP's fatal infatuation. And, and I, I, I wouldn't want to read it if I were you. I'd be tired of reading th things like this. You're well aware of the problems uh, hurting cats uh, in the Senate, but I do point out that the moderate GOP senators, uh, especially in states that have Medicaid, it's, you know, you've got those guys on one side and you've got Rand Paul and others on the other side that want to get rid of all entitlements. What the heck is going to happen? How do you bridge that divide? The yeah. efforts that uh, okay. McConnell's so, uh, putting Senator, forth sorry, about a sorry, Senator, start over that. I don't know, they didn't have your mic on, but start right from the very beginning because we didn't hear the first and, part. Am I on now? Yep. Yes. Am I on now? There you go. Yes, sir. So look, I, I, I uh, look, it's tough bringing everybody together. Look, uh, let me just start with the greatest threat to our nation is the fiscal crisis in front of us, and it's coming closer and closer. We have got to deal with the mandatory spending issues. We have to deal with them. It's 70 percent of our spending. Medicaid reform has to occur. There are a few states around our country that, in essence, are holding us hostage. But look, for us to say to states, look, we'll, we'll continue to have the Medicaid expansion, and here's the deal. We'll pay two-thirds of the cost if y'all will pay one-third of the cost. We'll give you the flexibilities that you need to make it work. And for them to say, no, we would throw everybody off the rolls, and for people then to say, we are heartless, to me, is a ridiculous proposition. Uh, Joe, we have got to deal with Medicaid and appropriate. I'm, I'm way on the Toomey side of Medicaid reform. There are some issues with the exchange that we need to deal with. I think everybody recognizes in our caucus that if somebody's making $12,000 a year and you only give them enough of a subsidy to buy a $6,000 deductible policy, that's not really health care. And so we do need to deal with this. But, Joe, this has been something that we've been counting as a $2 trillion fiscal savings. And right now, we're sitting at about $320 billion. That's going to be reduced some because of the subsidies I just mentioned. And we're doing away in this bill with all of the revenues, which were a part of the $2 trillion in savings. So we've got a lot of work to do to save our nation. Um, I believe it's almost inevitable, without abrupt changes, that we're going to have a fiscal calamity in our country. And we've got to yeah. quickly move to a place where we resolve this issue. Yeah. I, I, I worry that some senators are, are too sensitive or too worried uh, you know, about criticism from the left, which is hyperbolic about people, you know, people dying. I mean, I, I understand the issues here, but let's, you see, California was looking yeah. at single payer. They wouldn't have been able to do one other thing. They wouldn't have, roads, schools, right. um, fire department, well, one other thing. And, and in, in some states that have Medicaid, where it's gotten so many people are, are using it now as, as health care, a lot of other programs, really programs that are much needed and, and very beneficial to, to people's lives in those states, there's no room for those anymore. So, it, you know, sometimes the medicine is yeah. tough, but these guys don't seem to have the, the, the backbone to realize that, that sometimes it is tough to, to do what's necessary to preserve a program or to, or to, yeah. you know, to preserve solvency. You can't, yeah. you know, there's no free yeah. lunches. You know, uh, Joe, Go ahead, uh, good morning, yeah. Senator. How are you? Ken Langone. Nice hey, to see you Ken. again. Ken's got Good a medical you, center, so uh, just don't, he Look. knows a lot about this, Senator. Uh, Langone Medical yeah. Center. Yeah, and, and it is a serious problem. And your point that the government, federal government takes two-thirds and one-third comes, however it's divided up, the fact is at the end of the day it all comes from the taxpayers. That's where the money comes from. And we have to, we either yeah. have to make a decision we're going to spend less or tax more. But you're right about the yeah. problem, and I think what we need to do is to address the issues in terms of what can we afford as a society. And that's not a pretty picture, because what we're effectively going to say is there are a lot of things that the government can't be responsible for. We're broke, and we are broke. We're $20 mm -hmm. trillion dollars in debt going up every single day. So I, I think we need to get more specific yeah. about exactly what we can do and what we can't do. And, and I understand 
this is a very thorny political issue you take obamacare for example we've put twenty five million people on a on a uh, health care basis that weren't there before you can't take it away we have to be realistic we can't take it back it's too late once you give it you know this better than me senator once you give these entitlements out it's awfully hard to say to people we got to take them back from you. so I, I i don't know the answer but it's a serious challenge yeah if i could I, look there's no question and uh the the meetings we've had for what it's worth have been very substantial and they have not been the way it's been portrayed where there's been a lot of infighting people have been expressing themselves strongly but ken let me get to your point this uh cnbc joe becky everyone for two or three years ago focused on you know trying to fix the debt i think it was called rise above right. well, let me tell you what's happening right now in this bill so so you're right um, we've given these benefits it's hard to take them away um, we are trying to make it work better we're giving flexibilities waivers to governors uh, we think that you know these things are best done by governors the flip side of it is uh, so there was two trillion dollars in savings projected in all of the ryan budgets and all the re senate republican budgets if we did this the right way what we're also doing ken uh, as part of this is we're doing away with all of the revenues let me say that one more time we're doing away with all the revenues which is about 750 billion of this so not only are we beginning to spend more money uh, on the Medicaid side because in, and now we're getting ready to flood the zone with opioid uh, treatments and look it is an, it is an epidemic I think we need to be prudent as to how we deal with it but this bill the way it's now being crafted also does away with all the revenues and so you know tack, the Ryan budget had those revenues continuing uh, that's the way we balance the budget uh, over a 10-year period. Now, $750 billion will be coming out of the revenue side. So not only are we spending more here, we're reducing the amount of revenues that are coming in, and again, hastening uh, the fiscal demise that we're going to be facing as a nation. Yeah. And, you know, you, you th I don't know. They, in the Henninger piece, it talks about the opioid um, uh, situation that's convenient uh, to, 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 to not do anything again I mean it, it's a terrible epidemic I don't that's not what we were talking about during Obamacare that's not what we've been talking about for the past seven years yeah. suddenly here it is and we can't move forward on on repeal and replace because of this new thing for for some moderate senators to you know to complain about. I, I, it's it's frustrating yeah. to a lot of Americans because I we don't see anything happening I uh, said I don't should we be optimistic mm -hmm. No, I don't think we, look, I, Joe, I'm sorry. I, I'm watching um, the fiscal side of this. And I think, you know, 90% of the time I've been on your program, it's been about the fiscal issues. I am uh, more concerned than, I'm ever, than I've ever been, that our nation, we've got all these threats around the world and, and uh, appreciated the, the very well-delivered speech day the president gave and sort of resetting uh, the way we're going to focus on Europe. I appreciated that very much. But right now, our greatest threat is ourselves. We have $20 trillion yep. in debt. And we're continuing to do things that make that worse every day. And I believe, unless something abruptly changes very soon, we will have a fiscal calamity and it's going to make all the other ills that we're dealing with in the nation pale and who gets hurt the most the lowest income citizens get crushed so no i'm not hopeful i still want to fight to save our nation but as i watched uh, what's taking place right now we're doing the worst of everything and again 17 or 18 percent of our revenues by the way will be done away with in this current bill 17 days so we're moving further away right. from balancing our budgets by virtue of the way it's being laid out now so both sides i mean you know joe fiscal conservative well conservatives now define themselves as spending the same amount of money but if you don't pay for it if you don't force people to pay for it that is conservative so that's that that worries me a lot more than north korea which worries me greatly 
a lot more than Russia, a lot more than China, a lot more than ISIS. It's ourselves. And the way things are set up right now, as Ken mentioned, we've given a lot away. Uh, we're not really to, we don't really want to raise revenues. Matter of fact, right now we're acting like we're going to lower revenues 17 or 18 percent. But we just haven't, as a nation, been able to face these tough issues in a way that any of you would face your own family issues. Yeah, it's a, it's a big philosophical question about whether we end up with, with a cradle-to-grave entitlement state like we have in, in some countries over in Europe, but the growth is much slower. And, you know, they, that was the genius, and that's pointed out by Henninger, too, the genius of Obamacare in, in getting it to be a, a, a program Ooh. that you can't get rid of was the Medicare, Medicaid yeah. expansion, because now it's, it's very, very difficult. Uh, and that, that's what he, Henninger points out, maybe Gruber was behind the, you know, the, the guy that said you know, how stupid the American people are. This was almost like the Trojan horse that made it so that it's, it's basically not repealable. Yeah. That's and it point. is not, I don't think it is. Yeah, it was a great, I mean. it was a great. Go ahead. So it was a great piece this morning, very great piece. And as a matter of fact, what we're finding, and we've realized this privately, the Obama exchange piece, forget the Medicaid piece, which, yeah. is, which is where most of the additional coverage takes place. Right. The Obama exchange piece is almost unsolvable now. It really is. I mean, I'm just being honest. Because what, you, what you're doing is you, you're saying you're going to cover all pre-existing conditions. You've got a small pool. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's, it's going to continue to run out of control. It is. I mean, there's almost no way of solving it. And so people are beginning to realize, well, I mean, the way to, re the way to resolve it would be to move them into some other government pool. But what you're doing is actually expanding yep. uh, what's already been put All in right. place. So, right. so you're right. I mean, it's, it's a very, it's a lose-lose proposition at yeah, present. I, and that's why you're seeing so many people uh, having difficulty coming together with this. And a few states, I believe, I'm sorry, I hate to be, but are somewhat holding us hostage from yep. doing some of the no, things right. that ought to be done on Medicaid reform. All so. right, Senator. Anyway, th thanks, have, thanks for the frank great to discussion. Be with you. Yeah, good to be with you. It was a pretty good speech. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to hear the West talked about in such glowing terms rather than sort of feeling bad about being the West. Uh, I, I don't know. It just had a, a different tone than a lot of the speeches we've seen lately that, that have been made over in Europe. Anyway. Um, not mentioning we're the, any we're the greatest nation on earth. We right. ju we just, we're the greatest well, nation on earth. We just need to pop, make sure right. that we keep ourselves that way. That's right. Right. You bet All right, we Senator. are. All right, thank All right. you, Senator. See you. Thank you. And Tennessee's thank you. great, too. Love Nashville.